Arthur, can we have a little chat? Apparently, I've, I've got this letter here from Snooper Sneed. Who's he? What are you counting, remember? Please, Dave, I'm dealing with weighty matters here. Oh, he says here you are legally obliged to have a board meeting at which convocation the annual return must be presented before a quorum of its members, preferably in the presence of a chartered accountant. When do I go for the Evesham extension or the Grassington gazebo? Come again. Her indoors. I'm thinking of getting her something for the back garden. She's always had a leaning to the green finger. One of these glass houses. Oh, no. Is that what these things cost? Well, you've got to pay for workmanship, Dave. Yeah, well, it's not that I'd begrudge her indoors a rear extension. But can we get our priorities right? Right. We are about to hold a board meeting, and you're supposed to be a shareholder. And so far, you have not shelled out the bean. I mean, you've had all the benefits, and I've hardly seen a penny piece. I've told you before, Dave, it's the recession. It's dried up me cash flow. How come then you can afford these here luxury linkers? If you care to refer to page 59 by the terracotta squirrel offer, you'll see they have easy terms available at competitive rates. I've already sent me forms in. Well, what's all this leading to, then? 1953, coronation year. Well, how's building a greenhouse meant to celebrate the Queen's ascent to the throne? I'm referring to my wedding anniversary. Oh, there. 1953. We got off to a very good start. Brief honeymoon in Shoebury Ness. And when we came back, I had acquired a pitch for a snack store in Trafalgar Square on Coronation Day itself. Oh, what a team we were. I was on the corned beef sarnies. Her indoors was crushing the lemons for the cordial. Poor Bahrain. It was a miserable day. And then... As the procession turned into Whitehall, chucked a left at Admiralty Arch, yeah. the sun shone through the storm clouds and glinted on the golden roof of the coronation coach. Her indoors turned to me, tear in her eye and a little catch in her voice, and said, the sun is shining on our new monarch. Radiant she was. Yeah, well, Mrs Daly always did have a, a certain glow. Not her, you prune, our new queen. Feel that, oh. aren't you? Uh, yeah, Marge, would you give Arthur another cup of coffee? What's she doing on that side of the jump? I thought her job was a quick mop and dust round before the punters came in. I've asked Marge to be relief barmaid. I have to be out and about this morning. Extra staff? You're splashing out with our profits, Dave, aren't you? Our profits? Look, Arthur, you have to buy the stamps to get the dividends. That's the point I've been trying to make to you. Especially with old Snooper Snee coming to have a look at the books. Somebody at the door, Dave? Yeah, I heard. Oh, Jimmy. Hello, Jim. What are you doing in this part of the world? Hello, Arthur. I won't get you a minute, Jimmy. Well, Arthur, I'll, I'll see you later. Well, don't be long, because I'm just off to pick up Toby. Right, right. right. Till now, Jim. Oh, Toby. Fifteen years. It's been a long time. Are you, uh, coming? No, uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. I know what you mean. But what is it like in there? It's not too bad. Once you get used to the routine, knowing Toby helped a lot, knew the ropes. Steered me up with a few cushy numbers. Prison library, that sort of thing. You're a good lad, old Toby. Little touch of class. Officer, take a good look at these men. They're a menace to society. <laughs> Toby, Joe, <laughs> Oh, Leonard, Leonard. Are you still serving the old special? He's Ken Barlow, still in Coronation Street. Well, it's marvellous to be out, Arthur. Back in the bosom of one's friends. All I've got to do now is find a friend with a decent bosom, eh? <laughs> oh. Man, it's a time I lay stretched out in my cell, daydreaming about one of Len's specials. Yeah. God bless you, squire, and all your descendants unto the seventh generation. Now, if you excuse me, gents, I'll just run this over the old shoppers and roger the consequences. 
Long time since you had a decent drink, eh, Tom? Well, barring the odd glass or two of home brew and a nip or two of cooking, Sherry, nigh on uh, 15 years. Oh. oh, that's like a slap in the kisser from a wet halibut. <laughs> oh, yeah, your fair hand has lost none of its skill in the parting of the years, young sir. I'll have another one all round. Ah, no, 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 steady, Toby. You've got to pace yourself, remember. You're not used to it. That's right, Toby. Everything in m moderation. More moderation? <laughs> you can stuff more moderation, my son. You can take more moderation outside and give it a good kicking. I've had 15 years of more moderation, and I'm here to tell you that more moderation ain't all it's cracked up to be. No, my son. Thank you. Give me excess and plenty of it. Cheers. Well, where are they, Dave? I can't wait round all day. I've got things to do. Yeah, well, Toby wanted to have his hair cut. Apparently, they're not up to Vidal's assumed standards in the scrubs. Where is he? Where's Dave the boy green, eh? Whoa! Whoops! He's a right stuff. Oh, whoop it, eh? Pissed again, all right? <laughs> oh, push me, eh? <laughs> oh, walk them after. Say that man's name. <laughs> where you been? Fingers in the till again, eh? Toby Joe Johnson. Come here, you old whiskey waterer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, who's that? Oh, this is Ray. Oh, yeah. Hello, Ray. Ray who? Ray Daly. You're Ray? Little sugar Ray Daly. <laughs> God, I don't believe this. I, you know, the last time I saw you, you were that big. Do you know why I called you Sugar Ray? Yeah, I know. Sugar Ray Leonard. No, Robinson. <laughs> fine boy, fine boy. Yeah. Oh, I've got to, um, you know, splash the old uh, brogues. Who's Nick Dekazi? Oh, it's over here now. Oh. <laughs> Somebody jiggling the carpet. When you finish, we'll be in the function room. Oh, good. I'll have a large one. Oh, what a state. Show a bit of respect. He was very good to your dad when he fell foul. Yes, I've heard. Hey, what's your interest in him? Oh, we were in the same gang as kids. Look, I hold no brief for tea leaves, but I have a sneaking admiration for Toby. His was a perfect crime. Well, if it was so perfect, how come he got caught? He didn't. He got pulled for drunk and disorderly, got confused and confessed to the lot. A tragic misunderstanding. There must have been some job. Dad said he got 15 years. Well, he asked for 63 other offences to be taken into account. <laughs> yeah. What was this uh, gang you was in then, huh? <laughs> The Brentford Backhanders. <laughs> Craftiest bunch of kids from West London you could find. All grew up to be pillars of the Wilson business community. Yeah. Blood brothers for life. <laughs> hey, give us a backhand, you old backhand. Oh, you fine boy, you got your oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dave, yeah. Uh, I feel a bit out of place here. I'm going to shoot off. Got an old school friend of my own to meet up with, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well, you shoot off, Ray. I find out Toby will be on this all afternoon. All right. Still serving the same old old cinnamon? <laughs> Here's to the health of Cardinal Puff, Puff, Puff. For the first time, I can drink any man under the table. Here we go. Come on, Arthur. I can't hold him up much longer. I can't find the right key. It's too dark. Shh. Keep the noise down. Home is where I hang my hat. Come on, Toby. Let's go forward. Yeah. This is the biggest wheat of bits I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I'll get off my jacket. I'll come. Come on, you, uh, sure you won't change your mind? I told you. I've got to be up really early in the morning. And the old daily charm won't work with me. Okay. You are impossible. I'll find another hotel for the night. Bye. It... What the hell is he doing here? There's been a bit of a 
Cock up. Crisis. Toby's a little bit plastered and your mum won't have him in the house, so you'll have to put him up for the night. Oh, no way. He won't bite. I'm not having him stand here. May I remind you who owns this PA out here? You can't do this to me, Dad. Consider it done. It's an emergency. Come on, Bert. A state to get into, eh? Three grown men. All right, Ray. Don't bang on about it. Hangover is his own punishment. What did Mum say this morning? I wouldn't repeat it to young ears. Yeah, I want him out of here. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that. He's staying here. He's not. He is. Arthur, I want this old lag out of here. Ray, Toby has been inside for 15 years. He's like a coiled spring. He needs someone to keep an eye on him. Keep him away from the boozer before nine. And don't let him anywhere near widows or post offices. Why not? Never mind. If he so much as drops a sweet paper, they'll have him back inside before the ink on his gyro's dry. Yeah, but Arthur, look at it. I'm sorry, Ray. I cannot have that on my conscience. But in the meantime, I am making you Toby's minder. He looked after me in the nick, son. I do owe him. Hello. Stopping out of time already? Didn't Toby look well? Oh, you should have seen him this morning. <laughs> Took me right back seeing him. Made me think. What about? Oh, the old days. The good old days. Never see their like again. Yeah. He was quite an handful when we was at school, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the old backhanders. You, Dave, Mickey Carnes. Who was the, who was the other one? Um, uh, Jimmy the Jeweler. I saw him recently. He looks as like if he's doing very well. <laughs> you know. Oh, Toby. Toby told me a very funny story about you lot. Uh, what? What was that? <laughs> well, you. Your mum had sent you out to get a, get a chicken from that Ben Butcher down Arlington Crescent. Wilkins, that, that was his name, Wilkes, yeah. And uh, on the way home, you met up with a gang and had a game of footer. Well, when she opened the bag, there at the bottom, <laughs> there in the bottom of it was a, it was a bloody great dead rat. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Apparently your, your dad wasn't half annoyed. He kicked me up and down Brentford High Street twice. <laughs> oh, that rat. All right, Dave found it. Down the drain on the wreck. That was Dave. Of course. We can all laugh about it now. Oh, we do. <laughs> he was a case, was Dave. Toby was telling me about the Wolsey as well. The Wolsey? Yeah, well, apparently, something about you ever know a Woolsey for your scrap and rag business. Mind you, that's going back a few years. Yeah, the old Woolsey. Fell apart on its first outing. Yeah. <laughs> Underweight of lead piping straight through the chassis, strewn all over the Great West Road. <laughs> Who'd have imagined Arthur Daly falling for a rust bucket like that, eh? That was on a recommendation of Dave. Yeah, exactly. Toby reckons he was on a commission from the cellar. <laughs> what a card. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? Bright as a button. Yeah. You always did have the constitution of an ox. <laughs> oh, Toe. Arthur. Oh, I'm glad we got a little while before we have to go and pick up Ray, because uh, there's something I want to ask you. Um, do you remember once my mum sent me over to Wilkins, the butcher, to get a chicken, and on the way back... The rat! <laughs> <laughs> a classic, that, was it? Oh, I'll never forget your dad waving that sack around and shouting. Afterwards, I'd never heard before. Or since, for that matter. Was it, was it old Dave who switched the chicken for the rat? I did you, Arthur. He came to the back hand it. Oh, no, 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 you're quite you right. Know, no member shall blow the whistle on another member, even if that member's blown the whistle on another member, remember? <laughs> yeah, you're quite right. I won't mention it again. Oh, blimey. Come. Oh. Thanks, Arthur. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, do you remember the scrap business? Oh, yeah, Daly's forgery. Yeah, a nice little number. Do you remember the Woolsey I got for transport? Uh-huh. Oh, no names, no pack drill. Well, it's a water under the bridge, Arthur. The point is, before you got, um, 
sent down in 77, yeah. we had a bit of business, you remember? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, the, the es Esquitoise. Yeah. yeah, the Iffy Chippendales, yeah. the deal of the decade, you called yeah, it. Yeah. I went in for a grand. Yeah, yeah, no need to thank me, Arthur. No, 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 I don't think you're quite getting my drift, Toby. Um, how can I put this? What happened? Uh, hey, it went through, didn't it? Yeah, nice little earner. But I didn't get any money. What? Yeah. I, I, I gave... You gave it to who? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Arthur. I can't answer that question on the aforementioned ground that it might incriminate a fellow uh, backhander. One of the gang. Code of the backhanders, Arthur. Dave. There's probably a simple explanation. No, oh, if only there was, Bert. If only there was. No, I see it all now. The rat in the bag did it. I mean, anyone who can stoop that low has got to have snow water in his veins. I mean, I can take a practical joke, but that could have seen Mum off the state of her nerves. He did give her a turn. And who sabotaged the scrap business with a wobbly woolsey? I knew he resented my success with a scrapyard. I could tell from the, the marked manner he had as he stacked the old car batteries. And now this bad business with Toby. Just the latest in a long line of perfidy. Why don't you go down there and have it out with him? I couldn't do that. Why not? It's against the code of the backhanders. Teaching on each other. I just dropped Toby in it. I wouldn't know about that. You never let me join. There you go. So. Cheerio. Cheers. I can't taste any vodka in that. Oh, it's in it, all right. Large one. Yeah, I believe you. Hello, Arthur. How goes the wheels of industry? Usual, Arthur. Raymond, any joy at the garden centre? Small, basic, greenhouse, minimum 250. Easy terms, I purchase. Well, you're joking. They're giving nothing on tick. Arthur? Yes? About that little chat we was going to have. Little chat? Remember the letter from my accountant fixing the time of our board meeting? Well, we were talking about you making me a little advance, you know, towards your shares in the club. You really do have a nerve, don't you? Pardon? Uh, nothing. It's of no consequence. Well, you, you know what they're like, don't you? Who? Accountants. What, what do you say? I say very little, Dave. I trust myself to say very little. But I'll consider it and uh, get back to you. You all right, Arthur? Perfectly all right. Though I do find the air a little feated in here today. Look, somebody's got to make a contribution to this club. Loftus Road, home of attacking football. Always did like the Rangers, Ian Gillard, Dan Bowles, Don Nathan, Jerry Francis, old Parksy and then that. Yeah, but Toby, there's no game on. Well, I've got to make the works there. Maybe you put a bit of business my way. Oh, well, I'll come down with you. All right. It is Dave, and if it's not, I know where to find you. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot, Jimmy. It's been a pleasure doing business with I'm you. I'm glad to be in on it. Arthur won't know what he did. Do you follow the Rangers? Nah, more of an ivory man. Oh, I love her myself. 
Used to fancy myself as a bit of a player once. John Oda Wizard, they called me. Inside right. I had trials here, you know. Not the sort of trials I'm used to now, though. Well, let's hope you've seen your last, eh? Uh, don't you worry. I'm going straight. I got plans. Nice little drinker. Decent clientele. You watch. I'll crack it. Yeah, you keep your nose clean. I'm sure you will. Listen, son. I know you think I'm a bit of an old lag, but I still want respect. So you keep your son to school homilies to yourself, okay? Now, don't get aerated. Don't come to Cherry. I know. Keep him out of trouble. Make sure he doesn't overdo the sauce. Am I right? Or am I right? Yeah, that about covers it. Good lad. I like an honest man. You remind me a lot of myself when I was your age. Bit of a lad, a few ideas, bit of an eye for the birds, right? Huh? Yeah, snappy dresser. Do me a favor. Don't end up like me. Yeah, well, I'll try. Always remember the first rule. Look after your mates. There's nothing worse more than a friend. The backhanders, eh? <laughs> no, no, not that kid stuff. I mean, for real. I'll take that. I mean, you look after him and he'll stick by you. He's sort. But Arthur's Arthur. I know, no, that man's cream, and I know what he thinks about you. Make sure you get his respect. I will. Can't learn. Who'd imagine it? Dave, of all people. I can barely bring myself to believe it. L and I water we've been through together, and all the time he was hiding a black heart behind the smiles, selling me out behind my back. But he was such a true friend. This is what grieves me, Bert. Him, who I thought of as the brother I never had. Well, the, the other brother I never had. Turns out to be a whited sepulchre, a turncoat. All these years I've been harboring a sniper in my bosom. But I could cheerfully fetch him a poke in the eye. What are you gonna do? I will no longer break bread with him, nor eat of his salt. He's had it in that department. He'll find out you have to get up long before a milkman if you want to put one over on Arthur Daly. Uh-huh. Where's Ray? He popped out for takeaway. What you got there? <laughs> my old photograph album. Yeah, there's some memories here, Arthur, I'll tell you. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, remember this one? You, me, and Mickey Carnes down at Broadstairs. Look at Mickey Carnes. <laughs> Look at that tag. <laughs> that was his Clark Gable period, remember? Yeah. Five foot two of Alton Salt. <laughs> yeah, what was that you used to say to him? You need a girl you can look, look up, up to. to. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you, <laughs> me, and Bert. Oh, look at you. Look at me, look at you. <laughs> look at Bert. <laughs> look at his trousers half mask. That's an old pair of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we are, down the allotment, digging for victory. Yeah, digging for spuds. We had about 50 pounds before the owner turned up. Yeah. What's that then? Crazy golf. Brenton. Me and Dave. Look, haven't we got enough? We're not feeding the 5,000. Yeah, it just feels like it. He's eating me out of house and home, Arthur. And as you haven't paid me yet, the least you can do is flip them all fill me fridge. How are you supposed to find anything in here? What's left on the list? Carrots. Carrots. Well, hold up, hold up. Sun-dried pimentos. You'll find all sorts of exotica, but you want a bag of carrots, you need a scalp. Well, leave it to me, I'll get them. Here, yeah, and Arthur, don't move. I don't want to spend the rest of the day looking for you. Squid. In its own ink. What? Arthur? David? Shopping? Obviously. Sir. It turned out nice again. Indeed. Listen, Arthur, about yesterday. Look, I'd rather not discuss it, if you don't mind. What is wrong with you? East is east and west is west. No, if you'll excuse me, I think I see the celery salt I was looking for. Oh, madam, watch that chicken. It could turn into a rat if you get behind the wrong person at the checkout counter. Pardon? Right. 
Look, he's your best friend. Why all this bad blood, son? There's no suddenly about him. I have discovered nefarious activities going back for years. Decades, even. Arthur, oh, you've finally gone. Gone, have I? There he is. Jimmy the jeweler again. And Mickey Carnes, the fifth back under. That settles it. What 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 you don't understand, Ray, is 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 tie, ties were forged that mean nothing to your fickle generation. If 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 Dave is seeing Jimmy and Mickey without inviting me, that 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 can only mean one thing: treachery. They are crowbarring me out of the winch. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Come on. You've had enough. Uh, no amount of bottled cook can wash away the, the disappointment, right? Same again. No, Arthur. Hmm? Come on, I'm taking you home. Come on. Oh, oh. The unkindest cut of all. Come on. Look at you. Watch yourself. Believe oh, right. Look, you sit down there. So I'll make your coffee and all your cab. Oh, okay. I tell you, between you and Toby. You've got to pull yourself together. Have you given any thought to what Auntie will say when you get back in this state, eh? Arthur? Don't ignore me when I'm talking to you, Arthur. Arthur! All right, drink the... Who goes there? Friend or foe? It's you, Arthur. Hey, what are you up to? I'm just shutting up. Do you remember the backhanders? Yeah, yeah. Of course I do. Do you remember when Mickey Khan fell out with Toby Jug over the football cards? It was a long time ago. They wanted to have each other out. Look, Arthur, it's very late. But rather than have a punch-up, we invented the ceremony of the button. Yeah, yeah, what, what, what of it? That's for a rat. What a rat? What are you talking about? Don't come to the enemy symbol with me. You know perfectly well what I'm on about. You're drunk. And you are a swine. But I will be sober tomorrow. And that's for the wolves. Leave it off. This is my best shirt. Come here. I haven't finished yeah, I haven't, warning you, Arthur. I haven't done the escritoires. What are you talking about? The wolves, the rat, the escritoires. Selling my shares behind my back, under my very nose. Get off my shirt. Give me that button. <laughs> oh, no. You, you've done it now. You're barred. Oh, you can't bar me. I bar me. You are bar me. Look, get out of here. With pleasure. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. You have tilted your lance at the wrong man. You will be in a cardboard box by the end of the year. And you'll be in a straight jacket by the end of the week. This means war. You hold the fort till I get there. Yeah. Turn on. Well, that's your lot. It's not exactly a conservatory, but I suppose it's going to have to do. Oh, nonsense. Look at the workmanship in that. What, is that the stuff under the rust? Uh, a little bit of brass, so that'll come up a treat. Well, that's a hell of a job, Arthur. Hey, see if you can find a box and some polystyrene bits to put it in. Make it look as if it's just come from the shop. Rather than straight from the skip, you mean? You mark my words. When you put a bit of elbow grease in on that, it'll look a treat. I'll get started then. No, no, no. No time for that. You're coming with me. Where to? What you brought me here for? Raymond, this will soon be the Las Vegas of Wilsdon. Busloads of punters will flock here. 
This is going to be the mecca of the smart set from Shepherd's Bush and Acton. What do you want about? This is a teeny boppers drinker. You can't get in here if you're over 14. Was, Ray, was. Things are changing. Let's go inside. No. No, 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 Arthur. Yeah, right, Arthur, what have you done? Don't tell me I'm here going into business. I have invested in a surefire winner, Ray. Invested? You haven't two washes to rub together. Ah, uh, with a go like this, you don't need capital. A couple of phone calls and I've been flooded with would-be backers. Who? Nobby Green? <laughs> Nobby Green, the great white loan shark. He is a shrewd businessman. Yeah, what did you use for collateral? Yeah, I'm under no obligation to disclose my sources to you. Not the car front? Certainly not. Well, you ain't got anything at... No, not the flat, not auntie's flat. Look, this is purely a temporary measure. I predict hefty profit within the month. You're doing this to get a Dave, aren't you? Nonsense. You are. You're putting your head on the chopping block just to have a dig at him. Look, what do you reckon? Frank Sinatra at Caesar's Palace or Tom Jones at the Sands? Oh, this is a full-blown feud, isn't it, Arthur? Well, I want no part of it. Oi, oi, may I remind you that you are not only in my employ, but you are linked to me by blood ties. And as such, it is beholden upon you when the family's in strife to close ranks. So get your jacket off. You've just been appointed Ed Barman. No way. What? If you want to behave like a vindictive child, Arthur, that's up to you. But Dave's been decent to me, and I'm not doing him down. Raymond, may I remind you, my enemy's friend is my enemy. Grow up. Time's a taxi, Bert. Oh, God, I knew I'd forgotten something. Oh. Well, I was leafleting all day. I'll do it. All right, Ray. Hi, oh, Mum. Dad? Let's go and polish our uh, shoes. Yeah, if you like. Mm. Yeah. You haven't reconsidered, then? Yep. There's nothing to consider. All right, all right. Don't get shirty. You're a big lad now. You'll make your own decisions. This is a wrong one, but that's down to you. Thanks very much. Bye. Be a lot of young people there. What'd you say? Come on, don't be obstinate. Go and dig out a whistle and come and shake a leg with us. Pay your double for the night. Look, Arthur, we've had our run-ins and we haven't always seen eye to eye. But I always respected you. Flash your invite over there, you get a free glass of champagne. Canopies floating all around the place. Help yourself, compliments to the management. Oh. See him. He's a die-hard Winchester man if ever I saw one. So we're on a roll. <laughs> There's hardly a soul here. There's some kind of curfew in Wilsden. Some new place down the road. Cheaper than here. Right, there you go, lads. Good night, Arthur. Good night. Thank you for a super, super night. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, I'll give you a toast. The premier night spot in Wilsden. In the words of the poet, we're in the money. How can we have got through so much stuff in one night? Well, that's the nature of a gala opening bird. You bunk the stuff out cheap for one night, then hit them with a real price once you've got them on the hook. Suppose you know best. Yeah, well, my pocket's not bottomless, so don't go mad in there. Come on, getting out of the way. I'm in a hurry. So am I. The rule of the road in here is keep left. I thought you only understood the rule of the jungle. What do you mean? 
everything are on my patch. You don't let me pass, I'll call the manager. No, Joe. Traitor. Same again? No, I'm just off. Where? Well, I'm going home. Why? I mean, I'm practically giving the beer away. There's three nose bags all over the counter. What more do you want? The wife's expecting me. Oh, sorry. I've got a lot on my mind. So on your way. Thanks. Look what the wind's blowing in. Dave, I've got nothing to do with this trouble between you and Arthur. <sighs> sorry, Ro, I'm a bit on edge. What can I get you? I want the answers to a few questions. About what? About who, more like. Toby Johnson. Look, I can see you don't trust him, so what's the score? Cold of the backhanders, right? Come on, give it a rest, Dave. He is trouble. Yeah, but he looked after my old man when he was in Nick. Anything that came his way, your dad paid for with his weekly snout ration. Or oh, acting as Toby's butler. Toby Johnson never did no one a favour for nothing. Maybe he's reformed. Can you pluck feathers from a frog? I do not know what's wrong with it, Arthur. I mean, it should be working. I mean, the heads are tight, the gas is on. Maybe it needs more pressure. See, that should do it. No, but let her rip. It's still not coming through. Well, you come on down, Dermot. After all, you're a professional. Look after the bath a bit, bro, will you? It's a more wonder. Here's your problem. It's still on clean. You haven't turned the beer back on. Lager's back on there. Four pints of lager and two. about that, ladies and gentlemen. Beer's a bit lively tonight. It's a, it's a new German premier lager we're testing. I'll, uh, I'll have a word with the manufacturers. Call back again tomorrow. Send out a throw a party, you know, That business as usual tomorrow. First send on... Send me the bill for the suit, Arthur. Yeah, send me the bill. Come back tomorrow. First one on the house. What a disaster. 23 cleaning bills and two of them silk suits. You're gonna have to employ professional staff. I can't afford it. You should see my books. They make very dismal reading. Well, I mean, it's early days, Arthur. I mean, you can't expect to make an instant profit. Oh, I appreciate your point, Toby. But the problem is we're flogging the stuff cheaper than we're buying it in, which is unsound business, whichever way you look at it. Well, look, mate, I mean, the point is you've got old Dave wriggling like a, like a winkle on a pin, eh? So you just keep your nerve for a few more days, eh? No, no, I've decided. Something has to be done. I'm not sure what, but something. Not bad, Ray. Not bad at all. I thought it through. It won't do. Rubbish. Good lick of paint, it'll look brand new. I'm talking about you and Dave. I have nothing to say in the matter. Sit down. 
Beg your pardon? I said sit down, Arthur. Now, you listen to me. I can't watch any more of this nonsense between you and Dave. You're putting each other out of business. Now, I've had a talk with Dave, and he's prepared to have a meet clear the air. Never. Will you wake up? You're spending money like water. I thought you was a businessman, Arthur. Words cost nothing, Ray. Now, who said that to me, eh? All right. You may tell him that I am amenable to a powwow. He's a good man. But he's got to be on neutral ground. For goodness sake! I suggest Carlo's Trattoria in Putney High Street and impress on him it's business only. Oh, and Ray, check the place out. I want to make him an offer he shouldn't refuse. Like some wine with your bone, Roy? Glass of your house red, please, Carlos. Uh, and you, Mr. Arthur? I'll keep a clear head. Very good. Carlos. Mr. Dave. Cancel the wine. As you wish. What's on your mind? A small matter of us cutting each other's throats, vis a vis the price war that's broken out between us. You started it. The cause is irrelevant. I'm suggesting a ceasefire. I'm listening. The solution is simple. It certainly is. You close your club. I am perfectly entitled to carve my portion of the market in a liberal democracy. You have no right to pilfer my trade. Bickering will get us nowhere. I suggest we stop the price cutting, knock the cheap membership on the head, and finish the promotions. To what end? A fair fight in the marketplace. You go your way, I'll go mine. Let the punters decide. And may the best club win. Fight to the death. If you've got the stomach for it. So, do we have a deal? You're on. Arthur. What you doing in my car? It's an emergency. Get in. Come on, hurry up. Oh, my God. He's had it away with the deposit money and all. I'm sorry, Arthur. All his gear's gone from the flat, too. There's no fool like an old fool. Yeah, off you go, son. Yeah, but... Of all the bars in all of Wilston, come to gloat. Uh, not at all. Oh, really? Very sorry about all this. Oh, you win some. Arthur, don't you think it's time that we got things sorted out? Toby. Well, he's nothing if not a sharp operator. That's proven. Water under the bridge. Old acquaintance. Best forgot. Arthur, what made you think I was selling your shoes in a Winchester? Oh, no, let, let's forget about it. Now, come on. No, I, I'd rather not say. Tell us, Arthur. Well, you and Jimmy the jeweller and Mickey Carnes sneaking around behind my back. Very suspect. <laughs> Let me in on the joke. What's it all about? Right? In 
the back room, Arthur. Arthur. Jimmy? Mickey? Take his coat, Dave. We've been hearing stories, Arthur. From Dave. Disappointing stories that are unworthy of an old backhander. How long have we known each other, Dave? A long time, Jimmy. A long time. And in all that time, did anyone ever doubt the spirit of the old backhanders? Never, Jimmy. Never. What are we going to do with you, Arthur? It's a shirt button job, isn't it? All the old backhanders chipped in. It all but one, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's say this is from Mickey, Jimmy, and me. Oh, you never. And uh, a bottle of ruby pulled from me, Arthur. Congratulations. Yeah, and here's the uh, ruby and the shaving brush you like so much. And me and Dora are going to take you and the wife out for a night on the town. <laughs> Here, come on, Ray. Let's get popping. Drinks in the bar, everyone. <laughs> to Mr. and Mrs. Daly on the occasion of their 40th wedding anniversary. <laughs> I hope Arthur's all right. He's had a bad time with this club. He's putting a brave face on things, but he's been very quiet. He'd be all right, Dad, if I know Arthur. <laughs> it was 1953. Edmund was on the top of Everest, a new royal was on the throne, and her indoors looked like a lovely princess in a white silk dress. Do you remember that, Mickey? I had it made up out of that parachute you liberated from the Vickers factory. <laughs> come on, Ray, you're past it. Give us a drink. All right, it's just come in. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, lovely. There you are, Mickey. Yeah, cheers. Right, Jimmy. Cheers. Uh, gentlemen, uh, backhanders, I'd like to propose a toast. Absent friends, long may they remain so. Here, here, here. 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 Mm. 